This is Julia Widdop with Talk Story Media, and we have with us today Oscar Perez, Dr. Oscar Perez, who is a mentor, speaker, a storyteller, and works in the Jungian tradition and shamanistically, I'm sure. Can you tell us how you got involved in what, what inspired you to become a shaman? Well, it's something that has been a part of my life since I was really young, since um, as far back as I can remember. I think like the earliest traces of it that I remember were when I was around 10 years old. And um, in part, it was having grown up carrying a lot of the ancestral weight of um, of grief that was left undone and experiencing some of the, the direct, like firsthand emotional and physical impacts of that in my household. Um, and at the same time, just being very hyper aware to the unseen world, being very sensitive to it. And um, when I was about 10 years old, I started learning about my, my indigenous heritage my lineage on my mother's side of the family and that really pushed me into wanting to learn more about indigenous spirituality so at a really really young age at about like 10 or 11 um, I started learning everything that I could about shamanism or about what people call shamanism nowadays wow at 10 or 11 yeah and it's been a consistent thread throughout my life um, but it's also come up like at times where everything in my life was falling apart. You know, those times when, when um, a lot of, for about six years, I'd say, um, between when I was 16 and when I was 22, I had a, uh, I started having these like flash like visions, images, memories of things that some of them were related to me. And later on, I was able to find out that some of them were, they went a bit farther back. Um, but the whole worldview that I was raised in didn't have any way to really deal with that. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I responded to it the way a lot of people in, in the community that I grew up in respond to things that they don't emotionally know how to deal with. And so I got, I became really self-destructive oh. um, and, um, and started trying to drown all of that out with things like drugs, and alcohol, um, and a lot of different like self-harming behaviors. Um, and all of that culminated one specific year of my life where um, everything fell apart. Or better said, I wrecked everything. <laughs> um, and then I had an experience that really woke me up one night where um, I, I got into a car accident and I actually caused the car accident. Um, and my best friend and I, came about three feet close to or our, my car stopped about three feet away from the power generator mm. um and that night i had like for lack of a better term a, a vision or this sense of of being um shown this forking path in my life and one of the paths that was very clear was where my life would go if I, can't, if I continued walking down the road that I was on. And the kinds of my devastation and destruction that that would bring, not just to me, but to all of the people around me. And at the same time, um, I got to see how it was coming from these generations upon generations of untended grief. Um, and, and I had to make a decision at that point, 
whether or not I was going to continue living my life that way and continue externalizing like mm -hmm. everything. Um, because up until that point, like I, I saw everything as the world's fault. Mm -hmm. All of the, all of the different types of physical and emotional violence that I'd gone through, all of the things that I saw out in the world, um, everything was because the world was messed up. And, and uh, that night I had this, this awareness that, that for lack of a better term, like spoke to me. But you know, in in this way of being, it's not like it's not like you see things like you see them outside of you. Right. It's not like you hear things like you hear them with your ears. Right. These things just arise, and you know that it's coming from something that's not your ego identity. You know, um, and uh, and it basically said that I had to spend the rest of my life dedicating myself to healing those ancestral wounds and through that helping as many other people around me heal from the same kinds of things otherwise like, my life was gonna like, literally be a living hell um and at that point i couldn't imagine it being much worse than where i was <laughs> so, so that idea <laughs> exactly right so that idea um hit me like that much stronger and shortly after that somebody handed me a carlos castaneda book uh-oh <laughs> that's how i got started too <laughs> yeah. um well so somebody handed me this carlos castaneda book and all of this happened um well the person that gave me the book i'd never met before and I have no idea what this guy's name was. I have no idea um, why he was even where, where he where I was. Cause I got arrested because of that car accident. So this is a guy in a jail cell that I got transferred to that handed me this book. And immediately after he handed me this book, he got transferred out of that cell. So I never saw him again. But when he handed it to me, he said, look, you need to read this. This is for you. And when I saw when I saw the book, I had um, I had already read Castaneda. All of this happened when I was twenty one years old, and I started reading Castaneda when I was about fifteen. Um, and the book was Tales of Power, and I started. I didn't put that book down. I I opened it up, and I read it cover to cover without stopping. And what hit me over and over and over again wasn't so much the story in the book um, as this realization that the reality that I lived in was this total hell. And it really sucked. Life really sucked. And I was creating all of it. Yourself. Absolutely. Um, and once that realization hit and I was able to look around me and see that I had just wrecked everything I was free to create whatever I wanted <laughs> um, so instead of instead of being like devastated by the situation that I was in um, or any of that I was really excited to see what would happen next you know, to see what I could start creating from that point on. Um, and so, so uh, I actually ended up spending, I was in county jail for 60 days. And this happened right at the beginning of that. And I spent the rest of the time that I was in there creating what life would be, what life was going to be like. Um, and then also really just starting to dig into the origins of that self-destructive behavior in me right? and starting to look at it and starting to unmask it. And so, um, I would sit and I would go inward 
And I would look at all these different situations that I'd gone through and the ways that I was using those situations as excuses to blame other people and to externalize all of that, you know, that anger, that, that rage that I had in me. Um, and you didn't really know where that rage was coming from. I knew where a lot of it came from because I had direct experiences that, that uh, resulted in it. But I didn't know where it all came from. Uh huh. You know? I realized over time, over the next few years, this was 16 years ago. Um, and, uh, and I realized over the, the next, I don't know, decade or so, um, where that a lot of it was coming from this historical trauma and this intergenerational trauma that came down both the lines of my family. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, but so, you know, after the time that I was in their past, I was, uh, I ended up having to do a year long court program. Um, and uh, part of it was that I had to see a, a counselor once a week and she was a Jungian psychologist. Oh, you were so lucky. And so I walked into her office and sat down and I told her, I said, look, this is what I'm working through and I'm, I want to do the work. And I know it's going to be hard, but, but basically I'm tired of this other BS. And I spent the next year learning about Jung and Jung's connection to mysticism. Um, and then I learned about existentialism. And in the process, I went about reshaping my life like outside of me, all those conditions outside of me. Um, and um, yeah, in, within like two years, I was, I was, um, I had taught myself Portuguese um, to go and live in Brazil and study some of the spiritual traditions in Brazil. Um, and uh, about two and a half years later, I was living in Brazil and finishing my undergraduate degree. And then I, I um, had applied for and gotten into a full paid doctorate, a fully funded doctorate. Um, also focusing on studying the the um, cultures of the Portuguese speaking world because I wanted to focus so much on my work on Brazil at that point and um, and I ended up going to grad school I finished I got my doctorate degree um, in 2011 I'm the first person in my family to go to college um, let alone you know get an Ivy League doctorate and and along the way, I just continued to develop this, this interest in shamanism and shamanic practice. Um, and I finished that whole leg of my, of my life in 2012. Um, in 2011, I finished my, my PhD, and then I got a contract teaching at Harvard. And I taught at Harvard for a year. Um, and in 2012, I left it to move out to California to start tending the fires, the organization that I have now. Um, and since then, I've been continuously involved in, um, in apprenticeships and in working with different indigenous communities and working with different um, like spiritual teachers of, uh, of various traditions. So I've been doing that actively for the last six years. Wow, that's wonderful. So <clears throat> which indigenous groups are you working with mostly? Well, so right now, um, I, I live in California. I live in Northern California. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I've been able to spend quite a bit of time with various tribes from that area in California. Um, but everything from, from uh, Maidu people to Pomo people to... Um, the the local people where I am now are called the Nisanan. Um, and uh, and so some stuff with them, with the Miwok tribe as well. Um, and uh, and with people from the Lakota tradition. Um, 
but it's I've had you know varied teachers from people in the the Amazon Amazonian Shipibo tradition um, to to more specifically people that are coming from traditions of North America and uh, in Central America Mesoamerica. So actually, right now, a big part of my work focuses on the Toltec tradition. Oh, um, interesting. But the Toltec tradition as as something that is um, that has a strong connection to North American tribes and to South American tribes as well. Wow, that's interesting. And do you do any kind of uh, distance work? I do. You do? I do, yeah. Yeah, I have clients. I've had clients all over the world. Um, right now, my furthest clients that I work with are in Sweden. Um, but I've been able to travel through doing the work that I do as well. So I've had clients. Um, like I've lived in Europe um, for extended chunks of time and still maintain my clients here in the States and had clients in Scotland, Australia, um, South Africa, and wow. various parts of the States as well. Okay. So did you, did you look at our website? I did, yeah. Okay. Are you interested in becoming a traveling shaman and coming here to North Fork Valley? Yeah, potentially. That sounds really interesting. That we would like love to have you. Yeah. Wonderful. We would. Wonderful. Well, okay. Tell us again your website so people can find you. It's tendingthefires.com. Tending the fires. That's it. And it's fires plural. Okay. Okay. Thank you for being with us today. And I want to talk to you more about possibly coming here. Wonderful. That sounds great. Okay. Thanks for being on our show. And we will talk more. Thank you, Julia.